Hello students of Dynamics, welcome to this solution video for the rigid body kinetics work and energy example number two. So instead of writing this all out while I was doing the video, I decided it might be more efficient to go ahead and get everything written out and then circle back with a video here at the end. Okay, so on this problem, you recall from the previous video or the worksheet if you're in one of my classes, we have a three body system. Uh, two fixed axis rotation arms, AB and CD, a horizontal member here, AD, which is in curvilinear translation. Curvilinear translation because it is going to stay horizontal as these arms swing through an arc of 45 degrees from initially at rest to 45 degrees being pushed by a P force equals 20 is going to stay horizontal and a 15 foot pound couple applied here around point C. Additionally, we had a spring stretch between A and C which had a spring constant of 25 pounds per foot. So while you could work this problem using Newtonian kinetics, which is sum of forces equals mass times acceleration and sum of moments equals your mass moment of inertia times your angular acceleration, this would be a bear of a problem. It's a challenging problem anyways, and it would be two or three times as long working in an acceleration-based context. And so it turns out this is best to work in a work energy framework. Now, the nice thing about work energy is you can ignore all of the different forces that are happening in between location one and two, all except for the terms that do work and that you can basically lump all the rest of the stuff as energy terms. We have gravitational potential energy, we have spring potential energy, and also kinetic energy. So that's what I did here initially, is to write out my full work energy equation. Now I've lumped a few different things together for kinetic energy of rigid body systems. We actually have translational as well as rotational. We'll get to that term a little bit later, but fundamentally my gravitational potential plus my spring energy plus my kinetic plus this external work term. Now keep in mind this external work only includes terms that are not your spring energy and not your gravitational potential energy. Those are already included over here, but all other terms on free body diagrams that do external work is equal to our final gravitational potential plus our final spring energy plus our final kinetic. All right. Now I'll talk a little bit more about why some of these terms go to zero. Well, let's, just go, let's do them now. We are initially at rest initially. So therefore my initial kinetic energy, both translational and rotational goes to zero. Also, if the spring is unstretched initial, we have no delta. Okay, so delta one is going to be the difference between the unstretched length of the spring and the current length of the spring, which if it's the same length, that is going to be zero. So moving into the initial and final, uh, think of these as MGH, think of them as the gravitational potential energy. I went ahead and drew a full free body diagram of my system. Okay, I didn't break this into individual bodies. The challenge with breaking into three individual bodies is the pin forces here at all the corners. They're going to be displaced, they're going to move, they would actually cause work. Now you'd have equal and opposite work due to those on each individual body. It's really just easiest in a work energy context to leave this all together. But we do have some external pin forces here because this is attached to the ceiling and also C was attached to the ceiling. So I've added those pin forces. Additionally, the weight forces of all three bodies going through their centroids. Let me just move this right here. The centroid is actually just to line up my centroid with my weight force. So working through our gravitational potential energy, the location of the datum is really important. Now, the two places that I think could make sense to pick for the datum would either be the elevation of B and C, in that case, all of your H's would be negative, or I chose to pick my elevation of the bottom points, which is A and D. Okay, so my initial elevation of A and D is going to be my datum. I'm going to measure H positive going upward from there. So for my first MGH term, now noting that all of these pounds are pounds force, therefore they include the mass and also gravitational acceleration. And then we're going to add in my H1. H1 of a two foot log member, which is vertical, is going to be one foot up to its centroid. So 10 pound feet for either A, B, or C, D. And then as I look at my MGH of my horizontal member here, A, D, initially it's down at that same elevation as my datum. Therefore, the H is zero. Therefore, it has a gravitational potential energy initial of zero. Now I add these together, two arms, A, B, C, D, and then the horizontal beam here, um, A, D, I get a total of 20 uh, pound feet for that value. Now I went ahead and jumped into my 
final MGHs, just because I was dealing with these terms. So once again, 10 pound force. Now this distance is going to be the height, once again, above my datum. So if you take a look at the problem, initially we had our centroid here, half of that height, right? So one foot off of the datum. And then it's gonna move up here kind of in a certain way ever so slightly, not a great distance here, but a, a bit of a distance. And so we could define a little triangle which is based upon half of our arm length. So as a hypotenuse of one foot, and so I can find that the elevation from the top is gonna to be one times cosine of 45 degrees. Therefore, the distance all the way from the datum down here up to that point is gonna be two minus one times cosine of 45 degrees. And taking that times 10 pounds, I get 12.8. 9, 3, doing the same thing or similar kind of steps there for my MGH2 of AD. So this is for AD, MGH2. It once again has a pound force of 25 pounds. And I need to find in this case the distance from once again my datums down here up to the elevation basically of point D right, because the centroid of that horizontal arm is going to be the same elevation as D. And so this height right here is going to be a difference coming down off the top is going to be two cosine of 45. And so two minus that gives me this distance in between uh, those two lines. Okay, so that's the increase in height of that horizontal arm AD. That times 25 pounds gives you 14.645. So summing up two of these 2.93s plus one of these 14.645 gives me 40.5025. That takes care of my potential energies. Moving on to my work term, let's go ahead and leave our free body diagram here viewable. So the terms highlighted in yellow are all gonna be included as energy terms, it leaves, leaving only two external forces which actually move, being the moment here around C and also the horizontal force down here pushing on D. And so I can figure out how far the horizontal force displaces Really, I can go back to this triangle right here. Looking at this triangle, hypotenuse of two, angle of 45 degrees, so two sine of 45, gives me the horizontal displacement across here, times 20. And then the moment is actually pretty straightforward. We just multiply the 15 foot pounds, then by the angle in radians, 45 converted into radians is uh, 45 times pi over 180 degrees, getting rid of the, the degree unit. All right, moving on through our problem, we have the spring potential energy. Now, springs are based upon a stretch from neutral. We know that initially this spring is neutral, it's said in the problem, and so we find the hypotenuse length of 3.6. Now, final, we need to find the distance all the way here from A to C on the same diagonal, but we've shifted things. We have a different vertical height of that triangle. We also have a different horizontal, and so I've broken those into three different components. Here's my vertical component, 2 cosine of 45, putting that inside our Pythagorean theorem, the square root of the sum of the squares. The horizontal piece is going to be 3 plus 2 sine of 45. All right, we're going to square that term, giving me a total length between A and C of 4.635. Down to my last term in my work energy equation, I have my kinetic energy. Now, keeping in mind that kinetic energy has two different terms now, a translational piece as well as a rotational, we can either compute these about the centroid or about the ICZV, which in this case, my two fixed axis rotation arms, the ICZV is at the point of fixed axis rotation. And either one of those will actually give me the same numeric value, either about the centroid or about the ICZV. So I picked my ICZV point for my two fixed axis arms. And if I do that, I end up getting a velocity of my IC equal to zero. But then I need to find my mass moment of inertia about the ICZV. And so that's the term here all in blue. And so we have one half times, I use the one third. Now keep in mind, this is a pound force divided by gravity gives me a mass equivalent to slugs. The length was two IC square that and so I get a coefficient here of 0 0.207 and then omega AB sub 2 squared my final angular velocity 
squared. And then for the horizontal beam, now for the horizontal beam, I went in and chose the centroid. It wouldn't have really mattered what point I picked because anything in translation has the same velocity for every point on that body. But it has omega of zero and the centroidal velocity is equal to v is equal to omega times r now this omega is going to be the omega of either a b or c d and then the distance is going to be two feet the length of those arms and so with that i find the value of my final kinetic energy of the horizontal bar i can add them together so keeping in mind here i had two bodies in fixed axis rotation one of those a b one of those CD and then the final one here AD so adding those together I find the value uh, just close to 2 times my final angular velocity squared so bringing all these numbers back into my original equation my gravitational potential energy initial my work terms my gravitational potential energy final my spring energy and then finally my final kinetic energy I can then compute all the way through, not forgetting to take a square root of this omega AB squared, and end up with 1.79 radians per second, a final angular velocity of the system at theta is equal to 45 degrees. So I hope that makes sense of this overall solution. Hopefully you tried this on your own first, just watching these videos, of course, doesn't always help you really understand all the details, um, kind of washes over you like you're in the shower. If you want to drink some water, you actually have to put it in your mouth, swish it around, swallow it, bring it into your body, um, work with it a little bit. But I uh, hope you're having an awesome day today.